Just wanted to do a short blurb with this Oregon uh, 720-120 3-in-1 chain grinder. Uh, I did shoot some videos earlier, but they're kind of all over the place. So one thing you want to do, you want to get your angles set correctly. So I'm at 30 degrees now. Most uh, still chains take 30 degrees. Some of the organs take 25. So I just want to check it and see it's, if it's similar on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I already got it set on like a, an amount. Last chain I did was 42 cutters. So I'll just put it on here. See how she does. And that looks pretty accurate. It's just a little under 30, but both sides look, look the same. Now, if this side was a little bit further this way, and this side was in a little bit, I would go around to the back, and there's an adjuster here. Let me turn it to the other side here. So the adjuster for that, evening that out, is this right here. So. If it was too far this way, then I would loosen this right here and push it that way. And if it's too far um, the other way, then I would do the opposite. Um, one more thing I wanted to show you on this chain. Um, it stops at the end there. I, put it in under 27 now. If I go again, it's going to cut another tooth and I can stop it. Then I just put stop. Stops the whole thing. Take. I always turn the uh, grinder off, grinding wheel, and then put zero again. Uh, it's hard to show while this thing was running, but the important part is getting these exactly the same. So I always check them because uh, sometimes from chain to chain, depending on the size, it can be a little bit different. I'm kind of meticulous. I used to be a printing press operator, so everything was had to be exact. So I guess I'm a little anal that way. Um, this earlier was uh, this back tooth was a little bit longer than this front tooth. So what you do is you go down here on this adjustment and uh, a lot goes a little ways on this. So it's a big turn to move it any, any ways at all. So I would do, like the arrow says, I wanna, bring, I wanna bring this back tooth forward so it cuts off a little bit more. So I would just take this, go down maybe about, uh, just about like, like that or so. And it's, like I say, a lot goes a little ways. So that way I can get it accurate. And you can see this, this is another thing you have to watch out for chains. Sometimes they have a link that's going the same direction. Uh, so that's really where you want to start your uh, cycle. Uh, this is an uneven count, 27. That's a good indicator that one of the links is going to be the same as the other, same direction. So I always uh, just count the, uh, count the cutters. I shouldn't say links, it's actually cutters. Count the cutters, and then um, then you can punch in how many how many you're gonna uh, do over here, and get it all lined up, and away you go. It's a pretty nice machine, actually. I use a carbide wheel on there. It's a, well, it's a, it's, it's not really carbide, but it's a CCM wheel, uh, CDM or whatever. Uh, it's consistent, stays in shape. Costs a little bit more, but it's worth the price. It's been a good machine so far. Anyways, we'll get to the other uh, uh, Tacoma where I grind the uh, rakers in a second. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the wheels that I'm using on my uh, organ chain grinder. This is like a uh, CBN wheel, I believe they call it. Uh, that's the organ part number. This is for the uh, eighth inch. And then I've got the uh, so three sixteenths on on the actual grinder right now because I'm doing a three eighths chain. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully. Anyways, it'll be in Oregon. So now I wanted to show you this Tacomac Robo. I think it's a Robo Jolly is what they call it. Runs off a twelve volt 
Uh, very nice machine. You can set the angle back here. Uh, there's this automatic Ford. It'll do regular chains and also skip chains. Uh, this is the um, this is the um, motor that pushes the chain, and this is your um, just your grinder wheel there. So you can you can usually I set it up without the grinder wheel on, and then just have it go forward. Let's move. Kind of see it there. Very nice machine. Um, then you can set your angle back here. Goes up to 35 degrees. I just, I just have it set to do um, just the rakers. But I'll use this to do a small chains too, like the quarter inch. There's two washers down between here. And I'll take one of the washers out and then tighten it up and then it'll fit that small chain in there. I'll be able to uh, sharpen those, but it sharpens like one one edge at a time. So you do all that edge and then you go back and you do the other edge, you know, when you're doing regular chains. But it's a pretty nice uh, machine for around 1200 bucks. Um, anyways, have a look. It hooks up to a 12 volt battery down here. And then I've got this charger to charge up the 12 volt battery. It doesn't take much power at all, actually. So. Pretty nice machine. It's made by uh, really Marcuson, just like the Oregon. And this is uh, an adjustment for your back to get it tighter. So when you flip it around, I don't know, I haven't really used this on here yet. So yeah, I was just thinking uh, what this probably is for is if it's like the Oregon, if your back raker is a little bit longer you would, or a little, yeah, a little longer, you would turn it to the right to shorten it. And so that way, when you switch around to the other angle, you won't have to readjust this back piece here at all. You should just be able to flip it around, turn it on to 30 degrees or 25 degrees, whichever it is, and it should cut it exactly the same as the front one. So if it's like the other one, if you go to the right, it cuts the back raker, this one here, a little shorter. If you go to the left, it cuts the front raker a little shorter. So that's how that works. One of the common things I wanted to mention on this Oregon grinder or Marcuson, whichever, um, is this uh, getting the angle exactly the same on both sides. Because uh, the, this is controlled by a cable with an adjustment on it, which is right back here. You can see that the double nut there, that goes one way or the other. So you have to watch that because it will stretch from time to time. You just have to check it. So I just set it. Let's just see if it uh, it's going to work here. Let's start her up here and see where she goes. Pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty doggone close. I could pull it to the right a little bit by uh, loosening those nuts and pulling the wire to the right. Uh, but I'm going to leave it at that. It's pretty doggone close. So um, you can be a real stickler for this, but you now see, see how it's kind of jumped off there. Okay. This is what I'm going to do here. Let's go to the back. Let's 
turn it the other way here. Okay, so I want to pull it this way a little bit. So I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to loosen this nut. And loosen that. Then I'm just going to pull it up a little bit. Let's see how that does here. This is better with two wrenches, but I'm just going to do it one just for the sake of filming here. Let's see how that does here. Yeah, see that's better. See how that lined it up a little bit more? So that's one thing you have to watch with this thing. It will jump off a little bit from time to time. Alright, looks good. Okay, here's the Tacomic uh, chain sharpener. I use it just to sharpen the uh, rakers on this particular chain. I'll just show you how I set it up. We'll just kind of start it. Okay. First thing I do I forgot to do is check the uh, height of the raker. So this little tool here, and uh, let's see. So what you want to do is you want to just feel that if it's smooth on top, it doesn't need much. Yeah, it doesn't need any, but it looks like it's coming up just a hair. I don't know if you can see that, but just a hair above there. So I'm going to take it down just a hair and then recheck it. As you can see, I did a little bit of an angle on my, my wheel to keep it more fairly flat, not necessarily totally flat. And usually what I'll do is I'll start it higher and then bring it down. Okay. Check that. Just a hair more. It's not quite smooth yet, so let's do another one. That feels really good. So I'm going to call that good. It's kind of hard to do it one-handed, but what you do, now that, that one's good, put this little clamp on here. Let me see here. Oops. Try the other hand. What that will do is it'll hit this little stop here, and turn everything off once you get it going. All right, so let's get her going. This particular chain, I had to take a lot off of the cutter because uh, it looks like they ran it into the dirt. So it'll you need to get right down to the chrome on the very top of the cutter to make sure it's sharp. Okay, 
Okay, it looks like the stop is coming up around. I didn't want to bore you with the rest of it. And, uh, this is a Marcuson. It's uh, Tacomac is with the branded name. You'll see a stop here. Okay, here. See it hits that. Shuts both of these switches off. And this also runs off a 12 volt, so you can hook it to your car battery or whatever. I've got a little weight hanging on here, which helps. And this is a little uh, battery charger underneath here, so I can plug it in and charge the battery up. I used to do the uh, breakers on the organ over here. This is a 3-in-1. But now I, I do the breakers on this machine because it just takes a long time to set it up. Alright, so hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.